Hi, happy Monday everyone. I hope you had a great Easter last week and I hope wherever you are you're having fantastic weather like I am. It's springtime and I am so happy about it and I'm also so happy to be sitting down and filming another Mad History Monday. On Mondays, I sit down and talk about an interesting topic in history. Usually things that I find weird or different or just wild. If that sounds like fun to you, I highly suggest that you subscribe because I do post one of these videos every other Monday. So this week, I am getting ready to go on a trip and I didn't really know what I wanted to research. Uh, so I just went to my really long list of things and picked this one out. I don't want to say that I'm fascinated by this topic in history, but it is really interesting to learn about, but also kind of disturbing to learn about, you know? So it's, it's weird. It's like, I want to know about it, but at the same time, it's like, do I though? Do I want to know about it? Yeah. But anyway, there are reasons why people took these photographs and I will get into that shortly. I do want to make a disclaimer though because pretty much all of the, not all of them, but most of the images that I'm about to show are a little disturbing and can be sensitive to some people, so keep that in mind going forward. It's, it's dead people. I'm going to be showing pictures of dead people. Very, very old dead people. Does that make it better? I don't know. The first photograph taken in history, or at least the oldest surviving photograph that we have, was taken by a French inventor named Joseph Nicephore Niepce in approximately 1826. He used a process called heliography or sun writing with the camera obscura, which is a fascinating process in itself. It was somewhat successful, but the image later faded and became really dark. When Niepce died, his partner Louis Daguerre invented the first successful daguerreotype in 1837, which didn't fade and needed much less time of light exposure. The image was still really fragile after completion, though. It was widely used during the 1840s and 1850s until much cheaper alternatives came about. Here's an image of Abraham Lincoln taken by a daguerreotype in 1846. After this camera was commercialized, many people started to play around with the invention of the camera and they started to improve things like light exposure time and the ability to make multiple copies. And cameras just kept getting better and better. I mean, they're even still being improved to this day. As cameras and photographs became more accessible, people started to desire these images for themselves. They wanted photographs of their family members as memories. Cameras at this time were accessible, but they were still pretty expensive for the average person. So if someone wanted a photograph taken, they would often hire someone to do so. But most people didn't have photographs taken of themselves or family members often. It was a pretty rare occasion. This is why we see a lot of postmortem photography at this time starting in the 1840s, especially in Britain, other parts of Europe, and America, because when someone in the family would die and they didn't already have a picture of them, many would rush to have a photograph taken so that they could have a memory of the deceased. And they had to rush because, you know, the person needed to be buried soon. A lot of people just never thought to have their picture taken before death. I mean, it was a pretty new thing at the time. But also, I read that photographs were approximately $2 each, which would be about $60 today. So, photographs were expensive for the average family. But death changes things. These images seem unsettling to us now, but during the time it was really a way for people to ease the pain of grief knowing you would always have that picture of the one lost, like a memento. I mean, we still do that nowadays, but it's not usually when the person is dead. Some families also had these pictures taken because back then it wasn't as simple as just getting on a plane and arriving at a funeral on time. Most people would not be able to travel to a funeral fast enough, and so pictures of the deceased were taken for them to see later on. During the Victorian era, there was a lot of death. Like a lot. Like a lot. 
Epidemics like diphtheria, measles, rubella, cholera, typhus, smallpox, yellow fever, scarlet fever, and others were around. And they didn't have the medicine that we have now, or the personal hygiene standards, or regulated clean drinking water. It was common to have a lot of children, but it was also common for children to die very young. And it wasn't much better for the adult population. The average life expectancy was early 40s. People back then prepared for death. They expected it at a younger age than we do now. Today, most people try to not think about death until it's right on their doorstep. I mean, it's painful, right? But back then, it was so insanely common for your family members and friends to die young, so you probably had to get used to people dying left and right throughout your whole entire life. People just died all the time. I mean, they still do now, but it's less common for them to die so young. We see many photographs of babies and children, children with their parents, or even entire families gathered around a deceased person. Death photography became really popular. Corpses would be leaned back on chairs and tools were used to prop up the bodies. Often, the children would be made to look like they were sleeping. Sometimes people were made to look alive, however, and eyes were sometimes drawn on the photograph later on over the eyelids to make it look like they were alive. Sometimes cheeks were tinted pink, too. They tried to make the corpses look beautiful. Also, since early cameras had long exposures, it was common for the dead person to look a lot clearer than the people that were alive in the photograph because of their movements. The living were blurry and the dead were clear. This is the most eerie detail to me. <laughs> when healthcare improved and cleanliness got better and photographs became cheaper, post-mortem photography became less popular and more people chose to have their picture taken while they were alive. Photography in general became a more normal and popular thing to do, especially when cameras themselves became more accessible to the general population. The practice of postmortem photography was still done up until the early 20th century, though, but there was less of a need to capture someone's death. Postmortem photography has always been, like, a thing, but people don't, people don't, like, invite a photographer over and pose with their dead family member now. I hope, because that is disturbing. In the day and age that we are in now, no. No. Apparently, though, people still take pictures of the dead. Like, nowadays. At funerals. I, however, do not understand this at all. I don't even understand the concept of open caskets. Why do you want to see someone that you loved in that state? Dead. Why do you want that to be the last time that you see that person? You know, it, I don't get it. That's traumatizing. <laughs> Honestly, it is. Most people take pictures like every day now, so there's no need for that. Wild. So this whole video today was kind of depressing. I feel kind of blah after filming it. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's interesting, but at the same time, it's sad. It's... It's, mm, mm, mm -hmm. you know, you know what I mean. Because if you're not feeling that right now, check yourself. <laughs> I mean, I understand why they did it, okay? I mean, it makes sense, but it's still pretty unsettling thinking about someone having a picture of their dead child on their nightstand. I'm very glad that I was not alive during that time. I hope you have a great rest of your week, and I hope to see you again next time, hopefully with a much happier story, but we'll see. I hope you still enjoy learning about this topic. It is really interesting, just a little weird to think about. I'll see you next time. Bye!